In this video, we're going to build an 8x12 shed in SketchUp. So we're going to start with the subfloor down here, including the skids. We're going to frame the walls and then frame the roof up here, the ridge board and rafters. Now this is an 8x12 shed with a 6x12 roof pitch. If you don't know what that means, that's all right. You will learn as we go along in this video so that everyone can follow along, including the beginners. I'm going to call out every tool I'm using. Before we get started, let's talk about the tools. They're right here in the sidebar. And if you click the three dots down below, you can find the tools that you don't already see in the sidebar. Now, every tool has a shortcut. Starting with this selector tool right here, you can hit the space bar to go to it. So if I were on the line tool here and I hit space bar on my keyboard, it goes right to the select tool. So what I'm gonna do is try to call out every shortcut as I use the tools. That way you guys can learn the shortcuts as you go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and delete this model right here and build it from scratch so that you can see how to do it. So I'm gonna start with the selector tool, which is space bar, and I'm going to draw a box around this. Now I'm dragging the box from left to right. If you drag a box from right to left, it will only select the things that are fully inside of the box. So notice this was the only piece when I did that that was fully inside the box. And I just mean every part of that uh, component is inside the box, right? But if you drag from left to right, it selects everything that is touching the inside of the box there, right? So anyway, I'm gonna drag a square left to right around this and I'm gonna hit delete. Okay, let's go ahead and start over. So the first thing we're gonna do is build our skids. Now I'm going to take the tape measure tool, which you can find here, or you can hit T on your keyboard. And I'm just gonna pull this out about 20 inches. If I hit the uh, R key on my keyboard, that's the rectangle tool, you can find that right here. And I'm gonna start where this line meets the red line, and I'm gonna pull it this way. Now if you look down here, this is the dimensions of my rectangle. Um, before clicking away or touching anything else, I can just type in 3.5 comma 144. So that's three and a half inches by 144 inches. 144 inches is 12 feet. And we're going to use a four by six skid. Now, a four by six skid is actually three and a half by five and a half. So not to confuse anyone, but... Um, what I'm going to do next is paint the top of this the color that I want my skid to be. So I've got the wood patterns right here. The way that I got to them is you go to this little search icon and then you can go down here to wood. And then when I'm doing like framing lumber, I often go to synthetic surfaces and use this color here. But I'm gonna go to wood and I'm gonna select this. So now we're painting with the paint tool, which is B on your keyboard. Here's the paint tool. I'm gonna paint the top of this. And then now when I hit P, P is for the push-pull tool. I'm gonna pull this up and I'm gonna type in 5.5. And so the reason I painted that surface first is if you paint something on the side that you're going to pull, it will just paint all six sides of the component there. And so we wanna make this a component, but before we do that, um, what I'm going to do is just notch out on the bottom. If you were actually putting a shed on skids, you'd want to get rid of this corner here so that when you pull the shed, uh, if you're going to move the shed, it's easier to move. So what I'm gonna do is take the tape measure tool, which is T, or you can find it right here. So T on the keyboard, and I'm going to come up on the blue axis. Now, if you find yourself not locked on the blue axis, you can hit the up arrow key. And now no matter what I do, it's locked on this blue axis. And so I'm going to type in three and hit enter. So that's three inches. And I'm going to on the green axis. And if you need to lock into that one, it is the left arrow key. So now it is locked in on the green axis. I'm going to type in four, hit enter, and then I'm going to hit L for the line tool. You can find it right here or hit L on your keyboard. And I'm just going to uh, go corner to corner here. And then now I can erase with the erase tool, which is E, e these lines right here. Now I'm gonna hit P again for the push pull tool. And I'm gonna push this 3.5, enter. So three and a half inches just to cut that away there. And so um, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side. So I've got the orbit tool right here, which is O on your keyboard, 
which allows me to orbit around my project. And then I can zoom out by scrolling, and zoom back in. And we're going to do the same thing here. So tape measure, which is T on your keyboard, pull up three inches. So I'll type in three. I'm going to go this way four inches. Four. L for the line tool, which you can find right here. And then just go corner to corner right here. Hit P for the push pull and then start pushing it this way. I can let off and type in 3.5, enter. Okay, so now we have our first skid. I'm gonna hit E for the eraser tool and just erase these guidelines here. I'm gonna go back to this side. I always build my projects from this side for some reason. Uh, you may wanna start in this quadrant over here or wherever you want, but this is where I build everything in SketchUp between the red and green axis. And I don't know why, but I always start it where it kind of lines up with the green axis. Now we've got our first skid. Before we do anything else, we need to make this skid a component. This is going to be a recurring theme throughout this video. Everything you build in SketchUp, at least 99% of the time, should be a component. And uh, what a component is, is it's essentially locking in this design here so that it I, d I can't accidentally mess it up. And let me show you what I mean. If I hit M for the move tool and I grab onto this line here, let's say I wanna move the whole skid. I grab this. What I might do is end up just moving one part of it like this line and completely warping the project, right? So to prevent that from happening, we're going to select this entire thing. And actually, let me show you an, uh, another way to select if you click on something once, it will select the face. If you click on it twice, it will select the face and the edges touching that face. And if you click on it three times, it will select everything touching that. And so this is why you wanna make things components because if you went to triple click something and you had something else touching it that wasn't its own component, it will also select that. Okay, so now that everything is selected because we triple clicked it, we're gonna right click on the component there or on the, on the uh, project there and go to make component. And I'm gonna call this four by six skid. Now notice I'm gonna get this message throughout the video that says a component with this same, uh, with this same definition will be replaced. So that's because I've already named the project that you saw at the beginning. I've already named all those components. And so, um, this will probably come up because I'll most likely name them all the same things. So if I click OK, we've got our component. So now, just to show you, if I click away, I can click on it once and it's fully selected. And let's do the move tool again, which is M on the keyboard, or you can find it right here. If I wanted to move this, it just moves the component just like we want. Okay, now I'm going to move a copy over here. So um, you may want to take uh, guidelines and the rectangle tool and sort of lay out uh, how big the shed is going to be but I've, I've kind of already built this and I and I think I know exactly where everything needs to go so I'm just gonna do a little math I know that from outer edge to outer edge I want 76 inches and so that would mean since this is three and a half inches wide and this would be the outer edge of the other one not to confuse you but if I'm not mistaken, I need to move this over 72 and a half inches. So I'm going to hit M, which is the move tool. But this time, I want to move a copy. I want to leave this one in place, and I want to move a copy over here. And so the way that you do that with the move tool is if you're on a Mac, hit Option. If you're on Windows, hit Control. And what that's going to do, if you notice, when I hit that, this little plus sign comes up. Just watch my red icon here. So this is the, oop, let me just get off of that. This is the normal move tool. And when I hit option, I don't know why it's taking, there it is. <laughs> the plus sign pops up. Now again, if you're on Windows, you're gonna hit control. If you're on Mac, you'll hit option. And so when you see this plus sign and you're using the move tool, it means you're gonna move a copy. So what I'm going to do is just click anywhere right here on this side. And I'm going to start pulling, and now I've got a copy. And I'm going to move it, what did I say, uh, 72 and a half inches? 72.5, enter. Okay, so just to double check myself, I'm going to take the tape measure tool, which is T, and I should have 76 inches end to end here. So yes, 6 foot 4 is 76 inches, 
And so we're good there. We've got both of our skids. And so that's another reason you want to make components is you don't have to remake projects. Like what, once we get into studs, we're just going to make one and make it a component and copy it across the project. Okay, so now we're going to make our floor joist. And because our project is going to be a total of 96 inches wide, I'm going to have a one and a half inch thick joist running this way and this way. So I actually need my joist to be 93 inches long. So I happen to know that I need to come out on each side eight and a half inches. So I've got the line tool. I hit L for the line tool. I'm making sure I'm on the red axis. If you get uh, messed up, see how I've lost the red axis. I can hit the right arrow key and I'm locked in. And I'll hit 8.5, enter. Oops, that didn't work. 8.5, oh, I accidentally hit a comma is what it was. Okay, so 8.5, and then I'm gonna come up five and a half inches because this is a two by six, and two by sixes are actually one and a half by five and a half. Now I need to get back on the red axis here. I'll hit the right arrow key to just lock in, and I should be able to type in 93. That's 93 inches. Come down 5.5 again, and then connect it all the way back to here. So now we have the face of our first joist. Now remember, if I want to pull it out and paint all sides at the same time, I just need to paint the side I'm going to pull on. So I'll hit B for the paint tool. And this time I'm going to select this color here. And I found it under synthetic surfaces like I showed you earlier. Um, I think it looks a little better than the, the colors I've got for wood. Let me just get rid of some of this stuff up here to not confuse you. So uh, I've got this color. I'm going to paint it right here. Get rid of that and hit P for the push pull tool and pull this out 1.5 inches. Hit enter. And so that is our two by six and it should be 93 inches. Just double check myself here. So seven foot nine, seven feet is 84 plus nine is 93. Okay, that's our first floor joist. I am going to copy this across the entire project. Now, when you're framing anything, you're going to frame it in uh, either 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center, something that when you lay plywood over it, the plywood will land dead center on one of the joists. So I'm gonna frame this 16 inches on center. The first thing I need to do though is make this a component, remember? So let's triple click this. And notice it did not select these because they are their own component. So we can't get these mixed up. That's why we're gonna make everything a component. So I'm going to right click or control click. I'm on a Mac, make component. We're gonna call this floor joist. Okay, so there's one floor joist. Now, I mentioned they need to be 16 inches on center. I hope I don't confuse anyone, but the very first one I move, it needs to be 16 inches from this edge, not from the center here. So instead of moving the first one 16 inches, I'm going to move it 15 and a quarter. So I'm gonna hit M for the move tool, option to copy or control if you're on Windows, because again, we're moving a copy. I'm gonna move this along the green axis and type in 15.25. So the reason I did that, let's take the tape measure and from here, pull it along the green axis and type in 16. So that is 16 inches on center. Now we don't have to do that every time. We can just move them 16 inches now because we actually want them center to center. So what I'm gonna do is just move another copy here, hit M for the move tool, option to copy or control if you're on Windows. Move this over, type in 16. And then now all I have to do is hit times, or I'm sorry, X, let's try eight. Is that enough? Yep, that's exactly how many I need. Now, the last thing you'll need to do is the last joist will overhang. It will actually sit on the center here. You need to move it back three quarters of an inch. And that's because that last sheet of plywood is going to land here. If this were to continue out this way, you would want it to land on center, but the last one you want it to land on the end. So on the green axis here, we're just gonna move it over and type in 0.75, enter. And so now we should be dead flush on that side there. So those are our floor joists. And now we just need the end joist here and here, and we'll have our subfloor framed. So what I'm going to do is 
hit R for the rectangle tool. I'm going to pull it out this way. I'm going to hit the left arrow key without letting go of my mouse here. Oh, I'm sorry, right arrow key, because I want this locked in like this. And what I'm going to do is type in 144, which is 12 feet. You could also, just to not confuse you here, let's do 12 apostrophe. That's how you abbreviate foot, comma, 5.5. So now we've got a face that is 12 feet by five and a half inches. And because these are components, they're not all mixed up. This just looks this way because they're on the exact same plane, right? What I'm going to do is hit B for the paint tool. And I've got this color selected here. I'm gonna paint that. Now I'm gonna come and hit P for the push pull tool and pull it towards me. Type in 1.5, enter. And so now we've got the invoice there. And what we need to do is make that a component. We can triple click, right click, make component. We'll just call it end joist. Okay. Now we can just move a copy of that over here. So we know that we want this edge to be one and a half inches past this part. Or essentially we want this part to land on the other corner there. So what I'm going to do, I know that this board's 93 inches. So if I hit M for the move tool, option to copy, it should be 94.5 if I'm not mistaken. So I'll type in 94.5, enter, boom. We're right there where we need to be. So now we have our subfloor framed and everything is a component, nothing is all mixed up. So if we wanted to move something, um, we're all good. So the next thing we need to do is put some plywood over this. And what I'm gonna do is come over here. I'm going to hit R for the rectangle tool. And I'm gonna hit the right arrow key before I do anything else, just to make this locked into the red axis. And I want this to be four feet wide and three quarter inches thick. So I'm gonna type in 48, just four feet, comma, 0.75. Okay, now I'm going to come over here, hit B for the paint tool, click this color here, just to distinguish it from the framing, and then hit P for the push pull tool. And we know that this is eight feet wide, so I'm going to pull this out and type in 96, which is 96 inches is eight feet. I could have typed in eight apostrophe, same thing. And now we've got a four by eight sheet of plywood. So just like everything else, we're gonna make that a component and we're gonna copy it over two more times. So spacebar to give me the select tool, triple click, right click or control click, make component, we'll call this, we'll just call it plywood since it's the only plywood on the project. Now I'm gonna hit M for the move tool again, option to copy, remember it's control if you're on Windows. I'm gonna move this over, but I need it locked in on the green axis. Once I've got it there, I can let off and just type in 48. So now we've moved it over 48 inches. And if I just back up and hit X2, so that's times two, we've got both sheets of plywood there. Okay, so now we've got our complete subfloor. We've got our two skids, we've got our floor joist, we've got the ends here, and we've got three sheets of plywood on top, looking good so far. So the next thing we need to do is start framing our walls. We'll start with the bottom plate here. I'm gonna come down here just to get closer to it. Hit R for the rectangle tool. This time I need to hit the left arrow key to lock it onto the green axis. And I'm going to make a rectangle. Now if you're having trouble, like it's not coming up where I want it, I don't want it to create a rectangle right here. Here's what you can do. Hit the space bar just to get rid of it. Hit L for the line tool. I'm going to just draw a line. So I'll come up on the blue axis. I'm gonna type in 1.5, enter come over on the red axis, 3.5, enter, come down to here and back to here. And so this is going to be our bottom plate. We're gonna get on this side of it, hit B for the paint tool, grab this color here, paint that, hit P for the push pull tool, and then start pulling it out. And we know that this is 12 feet long, so we can either type in 144, which is 12 feet and in inches, or one, two for 12, an apostrophe, hit enter. So that should be 12 feet long. What we're going to do is come down here, 
triple click, right click, make component. We're gonna call this top slash bottom plate because we're gonna reuse it for the top plates as well. Okay, so we've got our bottom plate there. And before I copy it over to here, what I'm gonna do is just build this entire wall and then just copy the whole wall over here, just save some time. So let's start with the first stud here. We're gonna come over here and we can either use the rectangle tool or the line tool. I'm gonna to hit L for the line tool. I'm gonna to come over 1.5 come this way, which is three and a half, but I can just follow the lines at this point. And then I'm gonna hit B for the paint tool, paint that face, P for the push pull tool, and I'm gonna pull this up 72 inches, which is six feet. And so that's a good height for the end walls. That means in this shed, if you're six feet tall, um, you can stand on this side and on this side, which are going to be the smallest sides of the shed, right? So this is a six foot board, and now we need to uh, make it a component. We're gonna triple click, right click, make component. We're gonna just call it stud. You can call it six foot stud. You could call it whatever you want. Um, now I'm going to move a copy, and we're, we're gonna stay 16 inches on center. And remember, the first one just needs to be offset by three quarters of an inch. So if I hit M for the move tool, option to copy, I'm gonna move this over 15, 0.25, enter, just to double check. You can take that tape measure, bring it out this way on the green axis and type in 16, and it aligns perfectly with the center there. So I'll hit E for the eraser tool just to erase that. Now we're gonna copy this one. We're actually gonna move it 16 inches, and then we're just gonna um, hit times whatever it was, eight, I think. So I've got the move tool, option to copy, move over, type in 16, Zoom out so I can see what's going on here, and then just hit X8. Yep, and we've got all of our studs there. We're gonna come down here and just move this back along the green axis, three quarters of an inch, and there we are. We've got all of our studs, and then now we need to move a copy of the bottom plate right up here to the top, and we're finished with this wall. So we know that the stud is 72 inches, now, if we were to move this 72 inches, this the top of this bottom plate would be right here on this edge, but you actually want it sitting on this, so an inch and a half higher. So instead of 72 inches, we're gonna move it up 73 and a half. So M for the Move tool, Option to copy, Control if you're on Windows. Make sure we get on the bottom plate here, and we should be able to move it up let off and type in 73.5. If I'm not mistaken, that should put us right on the top there. Okay, good. Now we could, we could turn this into a group if we want, where it's much easier to just copy it across, but we're only gonna copy it once. So one way you can do that is just hit the space bar and then select all of them. And the only thing that didn't get selected was the bottom plate. Now remember, anything that's inside of that square will get selected. So if I had come down here like this, it will select some of the plywood and all sorts of things. So what I did was I just selected right here so it's not touching the rest of the project. And then I just need to get the bottom plate. So what I can do is hold shift and click on that. So now we've got all of that selected and we need to move it across here. Now, um, you could just take this corner and align it here. I have trouble doing that sometimes, so I always just do the math. I hope I'm not boring people or confusing them when I'm saying, okay, this is eight feet, but this edge, if it were eight feet, it would end up three and a half inches too far over here. So instead of 96 inches, I need to move it 92 and a half inches. And again, you can just drag it over there. For some reason, I just find it easier to just do the math. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's just the way I do it. So. I've got M for the move tool, option to copy, move this over, over, and then, what did I just say, 92 and a half? Yeah, okay, 92 and a half inches that way. And now we've got both of those walls there. Let's go ahead and frame this back wall. Since it doesn't have a door, it will be nice and quick. Um, we're gonna start with our bottom plate. Now you could just draw it along the plywood here, or you could draw 
one part of it here, but you just need to start it so that you can use the push pull tool. I'm going to hit L for the line tool and click here and just come over 3.5. And then now I can just come straight down back to this corner, back to this one. We're going to hit B for the uh, paint tool. We're going to paint this. We've already got that color selected and we're going to hit P for the push pull tool. Now you can push pull this right into this and it should bottom out, but Sometimes I do things that may not be the fastest way, but I always like to measure things. I know that that's seven foot five, which is 89 inches. So if I come down here with the push pull tool, which is P on your keyboard, I can grab this. And uh, what did I, I already forgot what I said, 89 inches. Okay, 89 inches. All right, so now I'm gonna triple click this, right click, make component. Now we could call this end wall, bottom top plate, whatever. I'm just gonna call it top slash bottom two because we already have another one. So top bottom two. What you really should do is name it things with the length on the name. That way if you go over here to components, it tells you exactly how long it is. And by the way, if you go here to components and you click on one of them, it will bring it into the project. So you can always reuse these things. If you're in the pro version, it will actually tell you how many. Like, it, you know, if we had studs here, it will say, you know, whatever, 10, 20 studs. So um, anyway, that's why if you name them the length as well. So if I would say like stud 72 inches, you know, in the pro version, you'll know exactly how many you have and how long they are. And you could easily create a cut list. But anyway, let's go ahead and start some studs. Now, I'm not going to use these studs. You'll see the design I have. Um, it's actually not gonna use a, t a double top plate here, but it's gonna use it on the other side because there's a doorway there. Um, you'll see what I mean. I'm just, these studs will be a little bit smaller. So what I'm gonna do is hit L for the line tool. And again, I could use the rectangle tool, but when I only have to use um, one measurement here, I'm gonna hit 1.5, and then I can just follow along like this. I don't mind using the line tool. I'm gonna hit B for the paint tool, paint that hit P for the push pull tool and I'm going to pull this up and these studs are going to be 70 and a half. So I'll type in 70.5 enter. And so we've got our stud right there. It's going to be just shy of this one here and you'll see why that is in a little bit. I'm going to triple click, right click, make component. We're going to call it end wall stud. Now we need to set this up 16 inches on center. Now it's a little more complicated because we want it to align from here right and so we want we can go ahead and type in 16 and get a guideline there to make sure we're on point best way to do this is probably to move it to that boom it's there and now we need to move it three quarters of an inch so i can just pull it this way and type in 0 0.75 okay so we're locked in and you know i made a mistake there i did not copy it but we've got the harder stud lined up all we have to do is copy this one and we know it goes right back here so got the move tool I'll hit option to copy and I'll just bring the copy back over here meant to copy this one no problem easy to fix so let's hit E for the eraser tool erase this dotted line here and then we're going to just move over 16 inches on center and wherever it lands we're just going to add one to the end here so I'll hit M for the move tool option to copy move this over and type in 16 and then let's back up and hit times four yeah, that works, and I'm just gonna copy one more to the end right here. Same thing, move tool, option to copy. Come over here, move it right there. Okay, so we've got the studs there. Now we're gonna copy this um, bottom plate here. So I don't have to zoom out and then miss this. Like I said, I always just use the math. 70 and a half inches on the stud. We need it to go an inch and a half higher than that. So I'm gonna hit M for the move tool. Make sure I've got this uh, bottom plate selected. Option to copy, and I'm gonna move it up 72 inches, if I'm not mistaken. And then what we're going to do is make one more copy where it is a double top plate. So I'm going to move this option, move this up. It needs to be on the blue axis, and I can just let off and type in 1.5. So now we've got a double top plate here. What we're gonna do is just first make this wall with a door 
and then we're going to frame the roof so, so we don't have much left. But let's go over here. Um, we're going to hit L for the line tool, come out 3.5, come down to this line, just trace this along here, and P, uh, B for the paint tool, paint that. And this one is going to be 20 and a half. You'll see why 20.5 because the door is going to be here and here. And what I'm going to do is just copy this over after I make it a component. So triple click, right click, we'll call it front wall, bottom plate. And then I just need to move it over here. So instead of doing the math, I'll show you guys kind of the easy way because this is easy to see when you're doing things like from here up above this, you've got to zoom out so far that it's just easier to do the math in my opinion. But let's grab the move tool, copy it with option or control and just move it right there. No problem. And so the next thing we need to do is move some studs over this way. We're going to just reuse these studs over here. So if I just grab one M for the move tool option to copy, I'll try my best to just move it over here. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, good. That worked out. So maybe you don't have to do the math yourself, but that's just how I've been doing it. And uh, it is what it is. So let's move another copy over here while we've got an easy view of it. And then what I'm going to do is just put uh, a double stud on each end here where the doorway is going to be because this is going to be a four by six door and I want it to uh, have double studs on each side because it's going to be a heavy door and so just a single stud right here won't cut it so what I'm going to do is hit M for the move tool option to copy I can select this stud first if it's not coming up with it and just move one over here and then do the same thing option to copy move another one right there. And then now I could do the same thing from this stud or I could just select both of these studs. And the way that you can do that is you can click on one, hold shift and click on the other. So we've got two selected. And since this corner is going to be an easy reference point, I'll grab from the left side here, M for the move tool, option to copy or control if you're on Windows, of course. And then there we are. And so now all we need to do is grab these two top plates from the back wall and just drag them over here. So if I come over here, click one, hold shift, click the other. Another way you could do it is just draw a box that only selects these two. And then I'm going to hit M for the move tool, set it right here in this corner, option to copy. There we are. I'll zoom out more and bring this over just like that. And there we are. We've got all of our wall framing done. Now we're going to move on to making the roof. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to find the center here. I'm going to create a ridge board and that's going to be what each rafter connects to, right? So what I'm going to do is find the center and I know that um, I'm going to have a stud here and a stud on the other side holding that ridge board up. So dead center, this is an eight foot wide structure. Dead center would be four feet but I, I, I want the stud on center. So what I'm going to do is just offset that by three quarters of an inch. So instead of 48 inches, I'm going to pull a line at 47.25. And I know that's where I'm going to start my stud over here. So what I'm going to do is hit L for the line tool and from the intersection here, come across this board. Then I'm going to come over 1.5, come back, connect them. Now I can hit E for the eraser tool and just erase that dotted line. Hit uh, B for the paint tool. And I'm just going to frame the roof in a different color just for the heck of it. I mean, obviously, if you were framing in the real world, it would all be the same color. But just to distinguish the framing here, bring us into a new section. We're just going to make it a different color. So I hit B for the paint tool, painted that. I'm going to hit P for the push pull tool. And let's see, this should be 19 inches. 19 and 5 16. So I'm going to type in 19 space 5 slash 16. So that's 19 and 5 16. So there it is. And we're going to triple click this, right click, make component. We're going to call it ridge 
stud. I don't know if that's its term, but that's what I'm calling it. Um, it's just to support our ridge, our ridge board, so that you, know, you can just set that up and then now it's easy to connect the rafters to it. And it's not necessarily structural. If we're gonna add collar ties to the rafters, it's not necessarily structural, but the fact that this board sits here and sits there, I mean, it, it does keep it up a little bit, right? So, um, and I won't go into the details of that. Let's just, let's just keep going. So I need to move this over here. This is one of those instances that I don't trust myself to land it on center. So I think, okay, this is 144 inches long and I need it to be shy of that by this width, three and a half inches. So that leaves us with 140 and a half inches. So if I hit move M for the move tool, I mean an option to copy, and I just grab one side, get it on the green axis and type in 140.5, it will land exactly where I want it, and that's good enough. So the next thing we need is our ridge board. We're just gonna put a two by eight up here and a two by eight is actually seven and a quarter. So what I'm going to do is come up 7.25 and then pull it over on the green axis, 144, that's 144 inches or 12 feet. We can use the orbit tool to come over here, L for the line tool again to resume drawing with the line, click here and then pull this over 144 again and again, we could have used the rectangle tool. For me, there's a time and a place for the rectangle tool, just like there's a time and a place to use the math versus dragging it over. You can do what's comfortable for you. Um, that's the beauty of SketchUp. I'm just giving you guys the sort of basics to get started. So now what we wanna do is hit B for the paint tool, and I'm gonna use this darker color here, and I'm going to hit P for the push-pull tool, and this needs to come over 1.5 enter and so now that's a two by eight all we need to do is triple click it make it a component I'm gonna name it ridge or it's ridge it's a ridge board we'll name it ridge board and there we are we've got our two by eight for a ridge board and I'm actually going to make this with two by six rafters now this might be the most complicated part of the project but it's actually not that bad what I'm going to do is create a two by six board for my rafter, and then I'm going to set it at the angle I want and then make the cuts on it that I need to and then put it in place. So let's first make the board. Um, I'm going to just start with a two by six. So let's just go off of this corner here. We'll go up 5.5 and then we'll come out. We can make this something like six feet long. We're actually going to cut it. Probably six feet is more than enough. And then I'll come down 5.5. Okay, so we've got a six foot long two by six. Let's go ahead and add the thickness to it. We'll hit B for the paint tool. We'll paint it this dark color. And then, oops, and then we'll hit P for the push pull tool. And then we'll pull this out, 1.5, enter. And so now we have our two by six. Let's go ahead and make it a component. We're gonna triple click it. And then actually before we make it a component, let's triple click it so that the whole thing is selected. Then I'm going to hit Q. Q is the rotate tool. You can find it right here, um, but Q is the shortcut and we want it on the green plane. Notice we could have it on the blue plane, red plane. If we hit the left arrow key, it will lock it to the green plane. And I'm going to just click on any corner here and then bring it out along the line here. And then now we can do this. Now, what I want to do is type in 26.6, enter. And the reason I did that, uh, we've got a 612 pitch. And so 26.57 is our actual angle. And we're just gonna use 26.6. Now, um, you may think that that's a weird angle and hard to get to, but the reason roofs are set at that is um, it's just determining like 12 feet this way by six feet this way. And a framing square allows you to draw the angle you need really quickly. So even though 26.6 is a strange angle, it's very easy to do in real life using a framing square. And so now we need to um, make some cuts here. What I'm going to do is hit L for the line tool. And I'm just gonna draw a straight line on the blue axis right here and hit P for the push pull tool and then 1.5, and 
and now we've deleted that so now we know that this will sit flush with this then I'm going to triple click it again just to make sure and what I'm going to do is come over here and hit M for the move tool and just lock it in to our ridge board now I've got a funny angle here so what I should do is just back up get a different angle like this hit M for the move tool just lock it in just like that now we still haven't made this a component and there's a reason why um, we're still going to manipulate it now you can manipulate a component after the fact just by triple clicking it again and we'll get to that but um, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to align this with the second stud here if we just look get a better angle it's on the first stud we're going to actually cut them flush on the ends here and um, it's going to be a little different on all the other studs so we'll start with how we're going to do it for most of the studs first I'm going to hit M for the move tool and I'm going to move this along the green axis and type in 15.25 remember we're 16 inches on center but the first one is offset by three quarters of an inch now this is the this is actually the part where it gets messed up trying to trace this out here for some reason um, it just always gives me problems let's see what happens if I just draw a line here it may work out fine on this edge um, P for the push pull tool I'm gonna move that 1.5 enter okay so we've cut that flat let's triple click this again um, if we were to make it a component it just gets really hard to do this for some reason it wants to draw on here let's see what happens if we just trace out what we need I'm gonna draw lines there and I'm gonna draw lines here just like that so we should be good what I'm going to do is just triple click this hit M for the move tool I want to be able to see what's going on here so I'll move it up and I'll type in five just so I know I moved it up five inches so I can hit P for the push pull tool move this um, type in 1.5 just to clear out the waist there and then now we've got our rafter it's uh, exactly how we want it and if I hit M for the move tool let me triple click this again now we can make it a component but just to show you I'll hit M for the move tool I'll move it down on the blue axis and we moved it up five inches so we're gonna move it back down five inches um, yeah and that's exactly what we wanted it to do now what we're gonna do is copy this we're gonna turn it into a component copy it everywhere we need it then I'm gonna set one on the end and I'm gonna make it a little bit different and I will make it a different component you'll see what I mean so let's first right click this make component we're gonna call it rafter and then now we can hit M for the move tool option to copy or control if you're on Windows move over type in 16 and then we're gonna do times seven instead of times eight because the ends are gonna be a little bit different and instead of putting them on all four ends and then changing them all I'm just gonna wait do one call it in rafter as its own component and then move it around and so what we need to do here is select all of these rafters I can just click on one hold shift click on the rest of them and then we're gonna move a copy and just flip them around and put them on the on the structure here so let's uh, just hit M option to copy we'll move a copy over on the red axis I can hit the left oh sorry right arrow to lock it on the red axis and then it doesn't matter where I move it because I'm about to flip it all the way around and so what I'll do is I'll hit Q which is the rotate tool and we want it on this blue plane so we'll hit the up arrow key I'll just click here and here and what I can do is pivot it I'm gonna type in 180 okay so now we've got our rafters facing the right way we've just got to move them in place here and so hopefully I can do this just by hitting M for the move tool and moving it along here I may need to change my angle a little bit and let's see let's draw a line right here just so we don't mess up hit M for the move tool move it right to that corner and E for the eraser tool and erase that line okay so just like that we've got all of our rafters now let's do the end rafters um, notice how we've got this little bird's mouth cut on the 
top plate that won't be uh, available to us on the ends here because we have these double top plates. And the easy thing is, in real life, you could just cut, uh, let's see, I think it's 16 or 18 rafters all together. And then the last ones, you could take this, and all we have to do is go with this line here, and go straight like that. So it's an easy cut in real life and easy cut for us here in SketchUp. So what I'm going to do is move a copy, M for the Move Tool, Option to Copy, move this over here. Okay, that's where it's gonna sit. Now, um, I should be able to triple click this. Like I said, you can edit components like that, but sometimes it lands, the line lands on this still. I, I have issues with that sometimes. So what I prefer to do is just hit M for the move tool. Like you saw me do just a minute ago, I'll come up a couple inches. So I'll just type in three inches. So I know to move it down three inches. We're gonna hit control and then explode or we could select make unique another way is to explode it so this one alone is not a component but the rest of them are so i'll triple click this again right click make component call it end rafter and now it's its own component whatever i do to this won't happen to these so let's go and do that again we're going to triple click so that we're editing the component l for the line tool come across the red axis till we're on the edge there Hit P for the push pull tool, 1.5, enter. Okay, so now we've cut that out and it didn't happen to the rest of these, good. Uh, let's hit M for the move tool and let's set it back down where it was. Okay, now we need a copy of this. Um, I'm gonna move one over here, select both of them and then flip them around like we did the rafters. So if I just hit this, hit M for the move tool, option to copy. I know that it's 144 inches all the way across but we're gonna take away one and a half inches for the thickness of this, which leaves us at 142 and a half. So I'm just gonna move it, 142.5, enter. And so now we've got an end rafter over there. So it's selected. If it wasn't, I could just click on it. I can hold shift and click on this one. And now we can move a copy again. Let's hit M for the move tool, option or control to copy. We'll move it along the red axis a little bit. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to hit Q for the rotate tool. We're just gonna start at the top here, hit up arrow key so we're on the blue plane. And then we're gonna flip this. We'll just type in 180, enter. And so there we are, our two rafters. The other one should be way back there somewhere. It is. And I'll hit M for the move tool. They're both still selected so we can come over here. I think it lined up perfect. No, it's a little bit off. So. Just get this right here, right there. Okay, now I can click away. And now we've got our rafters here. And then what you would actually do in real life, let's see the best way to get in here and do this, is add a collar tie. That's just gonna be a board that's gonna connect the rafters here. Now it's hard to get a good angle here, but let's take, um, let's get in here and try it. If we were to take a line from here, and we wanna to touch this edge here. Okay, now we're gonna keep going until we're right there. Now I actually need to take that line and go, let's get it over here a little bit, kinda of adjust. And then I need this to go to this edge. Okay. We would take that. Let's say we we're gonna just use a two by four or something. We'll come down, type in 3.5, enter. And then all we have to do is trace that line. So again, I'm gonna click here and then I'll pull it over here and I can use the orbit tool while I'm drawing a line and then come back to the orbit tool when I get where, I'm, where I can see what I'm doing, hit L again and I can connect that there. And if I just connect these, I should be able to create a face. Let me get over here, hit L for the line tool. I'm gonna hit space bar if it's still connected over there and I don't want it to be. Okay, good. So this is called a collar tie. And if you think about it, when this collar tie is on, these can't sag down. Also, we have these supports for the ridge board anyway. 
um, but a ridge board is different than a ridge beam. It's not necessarily structural. So we're gonna create this collar tie on all of the rafters, um, except the end ones. That's why I usually block that out, but let's just go ahead and do it. We're gonna hit P uh, for the push pull tool. And actually what I'm gonna do is paint it first. Let's paint it this color just to distinguish this here. P for the push pull tool, 1.5. Okay, so now we've got a two by four collar tie. And what we can do is just uh, triple click that, right click, make component, call it a collar tie. I'm just gonna type in collar, save time here, and then hit M for the move tool, option to copy, and I should be able to just move it over on the green axis, type in 16, and it's exactly where I want it. And so if I come over here, do that again, M for the move tool, option to copy. Should be able to move it over, type in 16, and then hit X7. It should go all along there. So actually X6, because we don't want that last one on there. So those collar ties um, keep the uh, rafters in place there. And so that is basically the process. We just built an eight by 12 shed in SketchUp. Um, really the purpose of this was to teach you how to use SketchUp to design a shed, but the truth is you could go out and build a shed exactly like we put it together here. And um, you could do that in the real world. So um, thank you for watching this SketchUp tutorial. Um, I appreciate you guys and I'll see you in the next video.